Luke here with catsandcarb.com and welcome to our latest video in the how to catch carp series and this video is going to talk about carp gear. Now there is a staggering amount of carp gear out there and if you're from the US or if you're new to carp fishing it can be quite intimidating. There are more gadgets in carp fishing than just about any other type of fishing and they can range in prices and qualities and makes and models and they're coming out with new stuff every year and it really can be intimidating to people who are trying to pick up the sport. You don't need all of this gear but each piece of gear serves a very particular function and so as you get into the sport it's good to know what the gear does, what it accomplishes, and that way you can kind of figure out what you think you want to have and what you think you can do without and what you think you can start off with and what you might get on later down the road or ask for Christmas, you know. So at any rate, so let me jump in. I'm just going to talk really briefly about each piece. I'm not going to go into detail. I'm just going to hit about what it is, what it's for, and give you just enough information to get you started on the right path to learning about car fishing and learning about this great sport. Bivvies and broilies are types of carp fishing tents that are very popular in the UK and Europe. Bivvies are for more long-term sessions, they're more durable, they can handle extreme weather. Broilies are more for just to something to get you out of the rain or sun for a overnight or a day of fishing. Both of them uh, are pretty heavy and a lot more expensive than normal tents, but they're much quicker to take up and put down. They're easier to get in and out of, and they have detachable floors so you don't have to take your shoes on and off when you come inside. In the UK and Europe, carp fishermen will often fish for you know four to ten days. They'll, they'll go for a whole week out carp fishing, and so they'll have very high quality uh, cots or bed chairs and these sleeping bags that are integrated sleeping systems that are very high quality. You can also get recliners and various types of fishing chairs that are extremely high-end. They're much more expensive. Um, they're bulkier than a lot of camping chairs, but they're extraordinarily comfortable and great if you're going to be spending days on the bank. If you'd like to see a review I did of the Nash Indulgence Highback Chair, click here or go to the description to find a link. Carp care and taking care of the carp you catch is extremely important to carp fishermen. So there's a lot of devices out there to protect the fish while unhooking them and weighing them. So you have weighing slings that are designed to help weigh the fish without harming it. Uh, so you put the scale, attach it to a bag and put the fish in the bag. You have carp cradles which are designed to protect the fish from thrashing around or getting uh, dinged up and scratched on the rocks. So you put them and unhook them in this. Um, the carp cradles come in all different sizes and shapes, or you can just get a really basic unhooking mat, which is just a pad you put on the ground. There are literally hundreds of different carp fishing bags, uh, rucksacks, backpacks, all sorts of different types. And they are amazing in some of the highest quality fishing luggage on the market. Um, so if you want really good tackle bags, gear bags, carp fishermen and carp fishing companies make some of the best. There's also things called rod quivers, which are designed to hold numbers of rods because carp fishermen usually fish with anywhere from three to six rods. And so rod quivers are a way of transporting them. If you'd like to see a review of one of my favorite rod quivers, click here or go to the description to find the link. Normal carp rods are generally 12 or 13 feet long for extra casting distance, but stalker rods are generally somewhere between six to 10 feet. A rod's test curve describes how stiff it is and how many pounds it takes to bend the tip 90 degrees. Generally a 2.75 to a 3.5 pound test curve is ideal for carp fishing. Carp fishing reels are generally designed for long distance fishing and have large spools with lots of line capacity. Their drag systems also vary. There's traditional front drag reels which have the drag knob on the top of the spool. And then there's rear drag reels, which have the drag knob on the bottom of the reel. There's also bite and run reels or bait runner reels that have both and a clutch that allows you to select between one drag and the other. Generally, the top drag is the fighting drag and the bottom drag is the drag you use when the rod is in the rod holder. And the clutch allows you to switch instantaneously from one to the other. So you put the light drag on when it's sitting in the rod holder and when you get a bite you switch it to the fighting drag. 
Bite alarms are essential for detecting bites in certain situations. If you're overnight fishing and you're trying to get some sleep, a bite alarm is essential. It also helps you to detect bites that are too sensitive and too subtle to detect otherwise. It also allows you to divert your attention away from your rods so you can do other things like cook and eat and go to the bathroom. This is really important if you're going to be fishing for a long time or fishing with multiple rods. If you'd like more information on bite alarms, click on this link or go to the link in the description to see that video. These little chains are called bobbins or hangers. They increase the sensitivity of bite alarms and allow you to detect drop back bites. If you want to know what a drop back bite is, click on this video or click on the link in the description. These are called snag ears and they keep your rod from coming out of the bite alarm if your rod gets jerked by a really aggressive bite. Bite alarms screw into the top of bank sticks and rod pods. Bank sticks are essentially stakes in the ground that have the ability to hold one bite alarm, two bite alarms, or even three bite alarms. And rod pods are more complicated structures that support your rod and hold your rod without needing to be driven into the ground. So they're great for concrete or docks. All bank sticks and rod pods accept the same thread pattern, which is 3 8 inch British Standard Fine. For a video review of my rod pod, the Signet Grand Sniper, check out this video or click on the link below. PVA is a plastic-like substance that dissolves in water. PVA is a delivery method for chum, and it's a great alternative in states that don't allow traditional chumming methods. You take PVA funnel mesh systems or PVA bags, you fill them full of chum, and then attach them to the end of your line and cast out your rod. The PVA melts and deposits a pile of chum around your hook bait, making your hook bait more attractive. These are PVA nuggets. They serve multiple purposes, including protecting your rig during casting and keeping your hook from being buried in the muck at the bottom of the lake. A few minutes after casting, the nugget simply dissolves away. PVA string and PVA tape is great for stringing boilies together or tying up rigs during casting. Kickers slide over the eye of the hook and allow the line to leave the hook eyelet at a 45 degree angle. It improves your hook set ratio. You can also use silicone tubing which is steamed at a 45 degree angle to accomplish the same thing. Lead clips and tail rubbers allow your lead to be ejected once a fish takes the bait. This protects the fish for by preventing the lead from becoming snagged during the fight. This is really important when fishing in lakes that are full of weeds. One of the most essential rigs in carp fishing is the hair rig. You can buy pre-made high quality hair rigs or you can click on this link or the link in the description to learn how to make your own hair rigs. A good carp hook has to be very strong despite being very small, be camouflaged and have an extremely sharp point. Non-carp fishing hooks in that size are not designed to land 40 to 50 pound carp. 12 inches of rig tubing above your lead can help protect the fish, prevent tangles, and also increase the abrasion resistance of your line. It also keeps your rig pinned to the bottom and camouflages it more. Bait stops are what keep your bait locked onto your hair. You feed them through the loop on the end of the hair once your bait is threaded onto the hair. Baiting needles allow you to thread your bait onto a hair rig. They can also be used for tying rigs feeding PVA bags onto rigs, and splicing leader. Stripper tools allow you to strip away the plastic coating on a coated braid hook link. The coating on braided hook links is very stiff and by stripping it away you allow that section to become malleable and soft without affecting its tensile strength. These ointments are designed to treat a carp that's been injured or wounded or sick. These finger stalls protect your pointer finger from being cut by the line during casting. They are particularly important if you use braided line. This main line is designed to sink. Sinking your main line makes it harder for the fish to detect it and prevents your line from being run into by boats. This leader is called a hook link and it's covered in a stiff coating that can be removed with a stripper tool. Stiffness prevents tangles during extreme casting. Floating leaders are essential for fishing with zig rigs or fishing for carp on the surface. This line is also translucent and harder for carp to detect on the surface. Zig rigs are artificial carp baits that float off the bottom. The most popular zig rig baits are just a simple piece of foam. Often black is the most popular color. Zig bugs are fake bugs made of foam that are used for zig rig fishing. Zig aligners are for attaching these cylindrical pieces of foam to your hook. Zig aligners are quicker and more convenient than a hair rig. Zig rig spools are designed for storing and organizing your zig rigs. For more information on zig rig fishing, click on this video or go to the description for a link.
Rig wallets are for storing your pre-tied carp rigs. The hook goes on to the little bar at the top and the other end is secured with the push pin. They zip close and are often uh, water resistant and stiff. Uh, great, great way to organize pre-tied rigs. There are many different types of carp baits, the most popular of which is boilies. Boilies come in several different varieties. There's pop-up boilies, which are used as a hook bait and float off the bottom. And then there's bottom baits, or normal boilies, which sink, can be used for chum or as a hook bait. Boilies come in either shelf life, non-perishable for forms, or they can be fresh and frozen. While the colors, smells, and flavors of the boilies are intriguing, it's the ingredients that often make the biggest difference. Look at the ingredients in the boilies more than the flavor. These goos are designed for spiking your hook bait. You squeeze a little bit of the thick oily flavoring onto your hook bait to give it a little extra kick. For more information on fishing with boilies, click on this video or go to the description for a link. Corn, hemp seeds, snails, various bird seeds, and tiger nuts are also popular baits. Some of these are just used as additives and some can be used as hook baits. There are also many liquid attractants that can be added to your boilies or you can use as a dip or a marinade. Wafters are a floating boilie that will sink under the weight of the hook. Wafters will look like a bottom bait, but they'll fly up into the carp's mouth much easier because they're neutrally buoyant. Chopped and crushed boilies disperse more scent into the water, and a crusher like this one helps you to crush up large amounts of boilies quicker. Baits like corn and maggot and bread can be stolen off the hook very easily by small fish, so fake versions of those baits are very popular, like fake maggots, fake corn. Some of these fake baits are impregnated with flavorings and come in funky uh, or even glow-in-the-dark colors. Bait catapults or bait slingshots are designed to help you chum locations that are too far to throw. Bait slingshots have different types of pouches designed for throwing different types of baits. Boily throwing sticks are designed to help you lob boilies very long distances, as much as up to 100 yards. Throwing sticks get better distance than a slingshot, but are not as accurate. Spoms are reusable little bombs that you fill full of bait, tie to the end of your line, and cast out to where you're fishing. When they hit the water, they explode and drop your bait into the water. Spods work like spoms, only instead of breaking open, they turn upside down and dump the bait out the back. Marker floats allow a bank fisherman to know the depth of the water in front of him and allows the bank fisherman to know what the bottom is like, whether it's gravel, muck, weed, etc. You cast the marker float with a lead attached out in front of you and you measure out how much line it takes for the marker to float to the surface. They can be cast hundreds of yards and they can be used to measure depth of water very accurately and you can get very good at telling what the bottom is based on what it feels like. Distant sticks are two stakes connected by a 10 foot length. By wrapping your line around these two stakes you can measure the distance to any location you want to cast to. It helps you in casting consistently to the same spot each time. This drill and cork system is to help you make your bait more buoyant. You drill a hole in your boilie or tiger nut, you insert a piece of cork, and that allows your bait to be a little bit more buoyant and fly up into the fish's mouth easier. There are many different types of leads in carp fishing. There's more aerodynamic leads for giving you greater distance. There's flat leads for gripping the bottom and current. There's inline leads which increase sensitivity. And then there's non-inline leads which work with ejection systems for fishing and weed. Carp leads are camouflaged because of carp's good eyesight and generally you want to fish with a lead that's somewhere between 2 to 4 ounces to get a better hook set. There's even specialty leads for marker floats, which aren't camouflaged, but are designed to help you feel the bottom to tell whether there's gravel or muck or weeds. Back leads attach to your line after casting and are used to sink your main line so carp don't run into it and boats don't run into it. Method feeders are a type of inline lead with lots of surface area so you can pack a ball of gooey dough bait around your lead and use it as a chumming mechanism and as a lead. Some method leads come with little molds to get the perfect amount of bait every time. Method feeders are perfect for states that have banned chumming. Bait boats are remote control boats that deliver your bait and chum to a very precise location. You place your hook, your lead, your rig in the bait boat along with the chum. You drive it out to where you want it, you hit a button and it drops it straight down. You can also get bait boats with wireless depth finders. that allow you to see what the depth of the water below the boat is and whether there's weeds there.
When you have this much carp fishing gear, you need a wheelbarrow to carry it. So there's these really great carp fishing wheelbarrows that are compact and fold up small enough to go in the trunk of a small car. They cost a lot of money, but they're generally light, highly maneuverable, and can carry everything you need them to carry. For a review of my Hello, tracker wheelbarrow, click on this video or go to the link the in the description. Extra. Well, at any rate, I hope this video was helpful in giving you a taste of what's out there and the type of gear that's available for carp fishing. Don't let it overwhelm you. This is a lot to take in and you don't need all of this gear. It's fun, it's helpful, it serves a purpose, but at the end of the day, you don't need to go out and buy everything all at once. But learn about it, learn when to use it, and uh, hopefully this will kind of whet your appetite to learn more about carp fishing and carp fishing gear. If you'd like to see other videos about carp fishing, check these out. And if you'd like to get new videos every week, Click subscribe to the Catfish and Carp YouTube channel and please leave any of your questions in the comment section of this video. And don't forget to hit subscribe. Thanks for watching.